Chapter three point thirty two part five of Personal Narrative of Travels to the Equinoctial Regions of America during the years seventeen ninety nine to eighteen oh four, volume three, by Alexander von Humboldt, translated by Thomasina Ross. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter three point thirty two part five if to complete the sketch of the structure of the andes from tierra del fuego to the northern polar sea we pass the boundaries of south america we find that the western cordillera of new granada after a great depression between the mouth of the atrato and the gulf of cupica again rises in the isthmus of panama to eighty or one hundred toises high augmenting towards the west in the cordilleras of veragua and salamanca and extending by guatemala as far as the confines of mexico Note. If it be true, as some navigators affirm, that the mountains at the northwestern extremity of the Republic of Colombia, known by the names of Silla de Veragua and Castillo del Choco, be visible at thirty-six leagues distance, the elevation of their summits must be nearly fourteen hundred toises, little lower than the Silla of Caracas. End of note. Within this space, it extends along the coast of the Pacific where, from the Gulf of Nicoyo to Soconusco, latitude nine and one half to sixteen degrees is found a long series of volcanoes most frequently insulated and sometimes linked to spurs or lateral branches note see the list of twenty-one volcanoes of guatemala partly extinct and partly still burning given by arago and myself in the annulaire du bureau de longitude pour eighteen twenty four page one hundred and seventy five no mountain of guatemala having been hitherto measured it is the more important to fix approximately the height of the volcan de agua or the volcano of pacaya and the volcan de fuego called also volcano of guatemala mr juaros expressly says that this volcano which by torrents of water and stones destroyed on the eleventh september fifteen forty one the cuidad vieja or almolonga the ancient capital of the country which must not be confounded with the ancient guatemala is covered with snow during several months of the year this phenomenon would seem to indicate a height of more than one thousand seven hundred and fifty toises end of note passing the isthmus of tehuantecapur huascacualco on the mexican territory the cordillera of central america extends on toward the intendencia of oaxaca at an equal distance from the two oceans then from eighteen and a half to twenty one degrees latitude from misteca to the mines of zimpana it approximates to the east coast nearly in the parallel of the city of mexico between toluco jalapa and cordoba it attains its maximum height several colossal summits rising to two thousand four hundred and two thousand seven hundred and seventy toises farther north the chain called sierra madre runs north forty degrees west toward san miguel el grande and guanajuato near the latter town latitude twenty one degrees zero minutes fifteen seconds where the richest silver mines of the known world are situated it widens in an extraordinary degree and separates into three branches the most eastern branch advances toward charcas and the real de catorce and lowers progressively turning to northeast in the ancient kingdom of leon in the province of Coahuila and texas that branch is prolonged from the rio colorado to texas crossing the arkansas near the confluence of the mississippi and the missouri latitude thirty eight degrees fifty one minutes in those countries it bears the name of the mountains of ozark and attains three hundred toises of height note ozark is at once the ancient name of arkansas and of the tribe quapaw indians who inhabit the banks of that great river the culminant point of the mountains of ozark is in latitude thirty seven and one half degrees between the sources of the white and osage rivers end of note it has been supposed that on the east of the mississippi latitude forty four to forty six degrees the wisconsin hills which stretch out to north northeast in the direction of lake superior may be a continuation of the mountains of ozark their metallic wealth seems to denote that they are a prolongation of the eastern cordillera of mexico the western branch or cordillera occupies a part of the province of guadalajara and stretches by culiacan aripe and the auriferous lands of the pimeria alta and la sonora as far as the banks of the rio gila latitude thirty three to thirty four degrees one of the most ancient dwellings of the aztec nations we shall soon see 
that this western chain appears to be linked by the spurs that advance to the west with the maritime alps of california finally the central cordillera of anahuac which is the most elevated runs first from southeast to northwest by zacatecas toward durango and afterwards from south to north by chihuahua towards new mexico it takes successively the names of sierra de acha sierra de los mimbres sierra verde and sierra de la grues and about the twenty nine and thirty nine degrees of latitude it is connected by spurs with two lateral chains those of the texas and la sonora which renders the separation of the chains more imperfect than the trifurcations of the andes in south america that part of the cordilleras of mexico which is richest in silver beds and veins is comprehended between the parallels of oaxaca and cosequiriachi latitude sixteen and a half to twenty nine degrees the alluvial soil that contains disseminated gold extends some degrees still further northward it is a very striking phenomenon that the gold washing of sinaloa and sonora like that of barbacoas and choco on the south and north of the isthmus of panama is uniformly situated on the west of the central chain on the descent opposite the pacific the traces of a still burning volcanic fire which was no longer seen on a length of two hundred leagues from pasto and popayan to the gulf of nicoya latitude one and one quarter to nine and one half degrees become very frequent on the western coast of guatemala latitude nine and a half to sixteen degrees these traces of fire again cease in the nice granite mountains of oaxaca and reappear perhaps for the last time toward the north in the central cordillera of anahuac between latitude eighteen and one quarter and nineteen and one half degrees while the volcanoes of tatla orizpa pococateptal toluca horuyo and colima appear to be situated in a crevice extending from east to south east to west north west from one ocean to the other note on this zone of volcanoes is the parallel of the greatest heights of new spain if the survey of captain basil hall afford results alike certain in latitude and in longitude the volcano of colima is north of the parallel of puerto de navidad in latitude nineteen degrees thirty six minutes and like the volcano of tutla if not beyond the zone at least beyond the average parallel of the volcanic fire of mexico which parallel seems to be between eighteen degrees fifty nine minutes and nineteen degrees twelve minutes End of note. this line of summits several of which enter the limit of perpetual snow and which are the loftiest of the cordilleras from the peak of tolima latitude forty degrees forty six minutes north is almost perpendicular to the great axis of the chain of guatemala and anahuac advancing to the twenty seventh parallel uniformly north forty two degrees east a characteristic feature of every knot or widening of the cordilleras is that the grouping of the summits is independent of the general direction of the axis the backs of the mountains in new spain form very elevated plains along which carriages can roll for an extent of four hundred leagues from the capital of santa fe and taos near the sources of rio del norte this immense tableland in nineteen and twenty four and a half degrees is constantly at the height of from nine hundred and fifty to twelve hundred toises that is at the elevation of the passes of the great st bernard and the splugen we find on the back of the cordilleras of anahuac which lower progressively from the city of mexico toward taos a succession of basins they are separated by hills little striking to the eye of the traveller because they rise only from two hundred and fifty to four hundred toises above the surrounding plains the basins are sometimes closed like the valley of tenochtitlan where lie the great alpine lakes and sometimes they exhibit traces of ancient ejections destitute of water between latitude thirty three and thirty eight degrees the rio del norte forms in its upper course a great longitudinal valley and the central chain seems here to be divided into several parallel ranges this distribution continues northward in the rocky mountains where between the parallels of thirty seven and forty one degrees several summits covered with eternal snow spanish peak james peak and bighorn are from sixteen hundred to eighteen hundred and seventy toises of absolute height Note, the rocky mountains have been at different periods designated by the names chipwion missouri columbian caos stony shining and sandy mountains End of note. toward latitude forty degrees south of the sources of the paducah a tributary of the rio de la plata 
a branch known by the names of the black hills detaches itself toward the northeast from the central chain the rocky mountains at first seem to lower considerably in forty six and forty eight degrees and then rise to forty eight and forty nine degrees where their tops are from twelve hundred to thirteen hundred toises and their ridge near nine hundred and fifty toises between the sources of the missouri and the river lewis one of the tributaries of the oregon or columbia the cordilleras form in widening an elbow resembling the knot of cusco there also on the eastern declivity of the rocky mountains is the partition of water between the caribbean sea and the polar sea this point corresponds with those in the andes of south america at the spur of cochabamba on the east latitude nineteen degrees twenty minutes south and in the alto de las roblas latitude two degrees twenty minutes north on the west the ridge that separates the rocky mountains extends from west to east toward lake superior between the basins of the missouri and those of lake winnipeg and the slave lake the central cordillera of mexico and the rocky mountains follow the direction north ten degrees west from latitude twenty five to thirty eight degrees the chain from that point to the polar sea prolongs in the direction north twenty four degrees west and ends in the parallel sixty nine degrees at the mouth of the mackenzie river Note, the eastern boundary of the rocky mountains lies in thirty eight degrees latitude one hundred and seven degrees twenty minutes longitude in forty degrees latitude one hundred and eight degrees thirty minutes longitude in sixty three degrees latitude one hundred and twenty four degrees forty minutes longitude in sixty eight degrees latitude one hundred and thirty degrees thirty minutes longitude end of note in thus developing the structure of the cordilleras of the andes from fifty six degrees south to beyond the arctic circle we see that its northern extremity longitude one hundred and thirty degrees thirty minutes is nearly sixty one degrees of longitude west of its southern extremity longitude sixty degrees forty minutes this is the effect of the long continued direction from south east to north west north of the isthmus of panama by the extraordinary breadth of the new continent in the thirty and sixty degrees north latitude the cordillera of the andes continually approaching nearer to the western coast in the southern hemisphere is removed four hundred leagues on the north from the source of the rio de la paz the andes of chile may be considered as maritime alps Note geognostically speaking a littoral chain is not a range of mountains forming of itself the coast this name is extended to a chain separated from the coast by a narrow plain End of note. while in their most northern continuation the rocky mountains are a chain in the interior of a continent there is no doubt between latitude twenty three and sixty degrees from cape st lucas in california to alaska on the western coast of the sea of kamchatka a real littoral cordillera but it forms a system of mountains almost entirely distinct from the andes of mexico and canada this system which we shall call the cordillera of california or of new albion is linked between latitude thirty three and thirty four degrees with the pomeria alta and the western branch of the cordilleras of anahuac and between latitude forty five and fifty three degrees with the rocky mountains by transversal ridges and spurs that widen toward the east travellers who may at some future time pass over the unknown land between cape mendocino and the source of the rio colorado may perhaps inform us whether the connection of the maritime alps of california or new albion with the western branch of the cordilleras of mexico resembles that which notwithstanding the depression or rather total interruption observed on the west of the rio atrato is admitted by geographers to exist between the mountains of the isthmus of panama and the western branch of the andes of new granada the maritime alps in the peninsula of old california rise progressively toward the north in the sierra of santa lucia latitude thirty four and one half degrees in the sierra of san marcos latitude thirty seven to thirty eight degrees and in the snowy mountains near cape mendocino latitude thirty nine degrees forty one minutes the last seem to attain at least the height of fifteen hundred toises from cape mendocino the chain follows the coast of the pacific but at the distance of from twenty to twenty five leagues between the lofty summits of mount hood and mount st helen in latitude forty five and three quarter degrees the chain is broken by the river columbia in new hanover new cornwall and new norfolk these rents of a rocky coast are repeated these geologic phenomena of the fjords that characterize 
western Patagonia, and Norway. At the point where the Cordillera turns toward the west, latitude 53 and 3 quarter degrees, longitude 139 degrees 40 minutes, there are two volcanic peaks, one of which, Mount St. Elias, perhaps equals Cotopaxi in height, the other, Fairweather Mountain, equals the height of Mount Rosa. The elevation of the former exceeds all the summits of the Cordilleras of Mexico and the Rocky Mountains, north of the parallel 19 and 1 quarter degrees. It is even the culminant point in the northern hemisphere of the whole known world, north of 50 degrees of latitude. Northwest of the peaks of St. Elias and Fairweather, the chain of California widens considerably in the interior of Russian America. Volcanoes multiply in number as we advance westward, in the peninsula of Alaska and the Fox Islands, where the volcano Ajegadan rises to the height of 1,175 toises above the level of the sea. Thus the chain of the maritime Alps of California appears to be undermined by subterraneous fires at its two extremities, on the north in 60 degrees of latitude, and on the south in 28 degrees in the volcanoes of the Virgins. Note. Volcanus de las Virginas, the highest summit of old California, the Cerro de la Giganta, seven hundred toises, appears to be also an extinguished volcano. End of note. If it were certain that the mountains of California belong to the western branch of the Andes of Anahuac, it might be said that the volcanic fire still burning abandons the central cordillera when it recedes from the coast, that is, from the volcano of Colima, and that the fire is borne on the northwest by the peninsula of old California, Mount St. Elias, and the peninsula of Alaska toward the Aleutian Islands and Kamchatka. I shall terminate this sketch of the structure of the Andes by recapitulating the principal features that characterize the Cordilleras northwest of Darien. Latitude 8 to 11 degrees, mountains of the Isthmus of Panama, Veragua, and Costa Rica, slightly linked to the western chain of New Granada, that is, of Choco. Latitude 11 to 16 degrees, mountains of Nicaragua and Guatemala, line of volcanoes north 50 degrees west, for the most part still burning, from the Gulf of Nicoya to the volcano of Soconusco. Latitude 16 to 18 degrees, mountains of gneiss granite in the province of Oaxaca. Latitude 18.5 to 19.5 degrees, trachytic knot of Anahuac, parallel with the Nevados and the burning volcanoes of Mexico. Latitude 19.5 to 20 degrees, knot of the metalliferous mountains of Guanajuato and Zacatecas. Latitude 21 and 3 quarters to 22 degrees. Division of the Andes of Anahuac into three chains. Eastern chain, that of Potosi in Texas, continued by the Ozark and the Wisconsin Mountains as far as Lake Superior. Central chain, of Durango, New Mexico, and the Rocky Mountains, sending on the north of the source of the River Platte, latitude 42 degrees, a branch, the Black Hills, to northeast, widening greatly between the parallels of 46 and 50 degrees, and lowering progressively as it approaches the mouth of the Mackenzie River, latitude 68 degrees. Western chain of Sinaloa and Sonora, linked by spurs to the Maritime Alps or Mountains of California. We have yet no means of judging, with precision, the elevation of the Andes south of the knot of the mountains of Loja, south latitude 3 degrees 5. But we know that on the north of that knot, the Cordilleras rise five times higher than the majestic elevation of 2,600 toises. In the group of Quito, 0 to 2 degrees south latitude, Chimborazo, Antisano, Cayambi, Cotopaxi, Coyanes, Iliniza, Sangay, Tungarahua. In the group of Cundinamarca, latitude 4 and 3 quarters degrees north, peak of Tolima, north of the Andes of Quindu. In the group of Anahuac, from latitude 18 degrees 59 minutes to 19 degrees 12 minutes, Pococatepetl, or the great volcano of Mexico, and peak of Orizaba. If we consider the maritime Alps or mountains of California and New Norfolk, either as a continuation of the western chain of Mexico, that of Sonora, or as being linked by spurs to the central chain, that of the Rocky Mountains, we may add to the three preceding groups. The group of Russian America, from latitude 60 to 70 degrees, Mount St. Elias. Over an extent of 63 degrees of latitude, I know only 12 summits of the Andes, which reach the height 
of two thousand six hundred toises and consequently exceed by one hundred forty toises the height of mont blanc only three of these twelve summits are situated north of the isthmus of panama End of chapter three point thirty two part five chapter three point thirty two part six of personal narrative of travels to the equinoctial regions of america during the years seventeen ninety nine to eighteen o four volume three by alexander von humboldt translated by thomasina ross this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter three point thirty two part six two insulated group of the snowy mountains of santa marta in the enumeration of the different systems of mountains i place this group before the littoral chain of venezuela though the latter being a northern prolongation of the cordillera of condenamarca is immediately linked with the chain of the andes the sierra nevado of santa marta is encompassed within two divergent branches of the andes that of bogota and that of the isthmus of panama it rises abruptly like a fortified castle amidst the plains extending from the gulf of darien by the mouth of the magdalena to the lake of maracaibo the old geographers erroneously considered this insulated group of mountains covered with eternal snow as the extremity of the high cordilleras of chita and pamplona the loftiest ridge of the sierra nevada de santa marta is only three or four leagues in length from east to west it is bounded at nine leagues distance from the coast by the meridians of the capes of san diego and san augustin the culminant points el picacho and horqueta are near the western border of the group they are entirely separated from the peak of san lorenzo also covered with eternal snow but only four leagues distant from the port of santa marta toward the southeast i saw this latter peak from the heights that surround the village of turbaco south of cartagena no precise measurement has hitherto given us the height of the sierra nevada which dampier affirms to be one of the highest mountains of the northern hemisphere calculations founded on the maximum of distance at which the group is discerned at sea give a height of more than three thousand and four toises that the group of the mountains of santa marta is insulated is provided by the hot climate of the lands tierras calientes that surround it low ridges and a succession of hills indicate perhaps an ancient connection between the sierra nevada de santa marta on one side by the altos de las minas with the phonolitic and granitic rocks of the peñon and banca and on the other by the sierra de perija with the mountains of chiliguana and ocana which are the spurs of the eastern chain of the andes of new granada in this latter chain the febrifuge species of cinchona carolus hirsutus staminibus inclusus are found in the sierra nevada de merida but the real cinchona the most northern of south america is found in the temperate region of the sierra nevada de santa marta this is the system of mountains the configuration and direction of which have excited so powerful an influence on the cultivation and commerce of the ancient capitania general of venezuela it bears different names as the mountains of coro of caracas of the Burgantin, of barcelona of cumana and of paria but all these names belong to the same chain of which the northern part runs along the coast of the caribbean sea the system of mountains which is one hundred and sixty leagues long is a prolongation of the eastern cordillera of the andes of cundinamarca Note, it is more than double the length of the pyrenees from cape creux to the point of figuera End of note. there is an immediate connection of the littoral chain with the andes like that of the pyrenees with the mountains of asturia and galicia it is not the effect of transversal ridges like the connection of the pyrenees with the swiss alps by the black mountain and the Cévennes, the points of junction are between trujillo and the lake of valencia the eastern chain of new granada stretches northeast by the sierra nevada de merida as well as by the four paramos of timotes niquitao bocona and las rosas of which the absolute height cannot be less than from fourteen hundred to sixteen hundred toises after the paramo of las rosas which is more elevated than the two preceding there is a great depression and we no longer see a distinct chain or ridge but merely hills and high tablelands surrounding the towns of tucuyo and barquesimeto we know not the height even of cerro de altar between tucuyo and caranacatu 
but we know by recent measures that the most inhabited spots are from 300 to 350 toises above sea level. The limits of the mountainous land between Tocuyo and the valleys of Aragua are the plains of San Carlos on the south and the Rio Tocuyo on the north. The Rio Siquisique flows into that river. From the Cerro de Altar on the northeast towards Guigua and Valencia succeed, as culminant points, the mountains of Santa Marta, between Buria and Nirgua, then the Picacho de Nirgua, supposed to be six hundred toises high, and finally Las Palermas and El Torito, between Valencia and Nirgua. The line of water partition runs from west to east, from Quibor to the lofty savannas of London, near Santa Rosa. The waters flow on the north, towards the Golfo Triste of the Caribbean Sea, and on the south, toward the basins of the Apure and the Orinoco. The whole of this mountainous country, by which the littoral chain of Caracas is linked to the Cordilleras of Cundinamarca, was celebrated in Europe in the middle of the nineteenth century, for that part of the territory formed of gneiss granite, and lying between the Rio Tucuyo and the Rio Yaraqui, contains the auriferous veins of Buria and the copper mine of Aroa, which is worked at the present day. If, across the knot of the mountains of Barquisimeto, we trace the meridians of Aroa, Nirgua, and San Carlos, we find that on the northwest that knot is linked with the Sierra de Coro, and on the northeast with the mountains of Capare, Porto Cabello, and the Via de Cura. It may be said to form the eastern wall of that vast circular depression, of which the lake of Maracaibo is the centre, and which is bounded on the south and west by the mountains of Merida, Ocana, Parija, and Santa Marta. The littoral chain of Venezuela presents toward the centre and the east the same phenomenon of structure as those observed in the Andes of Peru and New Granada, namely, the division into several parallel ranges and the frequency of longitudinal basins or valleys. But the eruptions of the Caribbean Sea having apparently overwhelmed, at a very remote period, a part of the mountains of the shore, the ranges or partial chains are interrupted, and some basins have become oceanic gulfs. To comprehend the Cordillera of Venezuela in mass, we must carefully study the direction and windings of the coast, from Punta to Cacas, west of Porto Cabea, as far as Punta de la Galera, of the island of Trinidad. That island, those of Los Testigos, Margarita, and Tortuga, constitute, with the mica slates of the peninsula of Araya, one and the same system of mountains. The granitic rocks, which appear between Buria, Dauca, and Aroa, cross the valley of the Rio Yaraqui and draw near the shore, whence they extend, like a continuous wall from Porto Cabello to Cape Codera. This prolongation forms the northern chain of the Cordillera of Venezuela, and is traversed in going from south to north, either from Valencia and the valleys of Aragua to Berberata and Turiamo, or from Caracas to La Guaira. Hot springs issue from those mountains, those of Las Trincheras, 90.4 degrees, on its southern slope, and those of Onoto and Mariara on its southern slope. Note. The other hot springs of the Cordillera of the shore are those of San Juan, Provisor, Brigantin, the Gulf of Cariaco, Cumacatar, and Irapa. Monsieur Rivero Ambosingo, who visited the thermal waters of Mariara in February 1823, during their journey from Caracas to Santa Fe de Bogota, found their maximum to be 64 degrees centigrade. I found it at the same season only 59.2 degrees. Has the great earthquake of the 26th March 1812 had an influence on the temperature of these springs. The able chemists above mentioned were, like myself, struck with the extreme purity of the hot waters that issue from the primitive rocks of the basin of Aragua. Those of Anoto, which flow at the height of 360 toises above the level of the sea, have no smell of sulfuretted hydrogen. They are without taste and cannot be precipitated, either by nitrate of silver or any other reagent. When evaporated, they have an inappreciable residue which consists of a little silica and a trace of alkali. Their temperature is only 44 and a half degrees, and the bubbles of air which are disengaged at intervals are at Anoto, as well as in the thermal waters of Mariara, pure nitrogen. The waters of Mariara, 244 toises, have a faint smell of sulfuretted hydrogen. They leave by evaporation a slight residuum that yields carbonic acid, sulfuric acid, soda, magnesia, and lime. The quantities are so small that the water is altogether without taste. In the course of my journey, I found only the springs of Cumanguias hotter than the thermal waters of Las Trincheras. They are situated on the south of Porto Cabello. 
the waters of Comangias are at the height of 1,040 toises, and are alike remarkable for their purity and their temperature of 96.3 degrees centigrade. End of note. The former issue from a granite with large grains, very regularly stratified, the latter from a rock of gneiss. What especially characterizes the northern chain is a summit which is not only the loftiest of the system of mountains of Venezuela, but of all South America on the east of the Andes. The eastern summit of the Silla of Caracas, according to my barometric measurement, made in 1800, is 1,350 toises high. Note. The Silla of Caracas is only 80 toises lower than the Carigou in the Pyrenees. End of note. And notwithstanding the commotion which took place on the Silla during the great earthquake of Caracas, that mountain did not sink 50 or 60 toises, as some North American journals asserted. Four or five leagues south of the northern chain, that of Mariara, La Silla, and Cape Codera, the mountains of Guiripa, Ocumare, and Panaquire form the southern chain of the coast, which stretches in a parallel direction from Guigua to the mouth of the Rio Tui, from the Guesta of Yusma and the Guaquimo. The latitudes of the Villa de Cura and San Juan, so erroneously marked on our maps, enabled me to ascertain the mean breadth of the whole cordillera of Venezuela. Ten or twelve leagues may be reckoned as the distance from the descent of the northern chain, which bounds the Caribbean Sea, to the descent of the southern chain, bounding the immense basin of the Llanos. This latter chain, which also bears the name of the inland mountains, is much lower than the northern chain, and I can hardly believe that the Sierra de Guairima attains a height of twelve hundred toises. The two partial chains, that of the interior, and that which runs along the coast, are linked by a ridge or knot of mountains, known by the names of Altos de las Coquizas, 845 toises, and the Higuerota, 835 toises, between Los Tiques and La Victoria, in a longitude 69 degrees 30 minutes and 69 degrees 50 minutes. On the west of this ridge lies the enclosed basin of the Lake of Valencia, or the Valles de Aragua. Note. This basin contains a small system of inland rivers, which do not communicate with the ocean. The southern chain of the littoral cordillera of Venezuela is so depressed on the southwest that the Rio Pau is separated from the tributary streams of the lake of Tacarigua, or Valencia. Towards the east of the Rio Tui, which takes its rise on the western declivity of the knot of mountains of Los Coquizas, appears at first to empty itself into the valleys of Aragua, but hills of calcareous tufa forming a ridge between Consejo and Victoria, force it to take its course southeast. End of note. And on the east, the basin of Caracas and of the Rio Tui. The bottom of the first mentioned basins is between 220 and 250 toises high. The bottom of the latter is 460 toises above the level of the Caribbean Sea. It follows from these measures that the most western of the two longitudinal valleys enclosed by the littoral cordillera is the deepest, while in the plains near the Apure and the Orinoco, the declivity is from west to east. But we must not forget that the peculiar disposition of the bottom of the two basins, which are bounded by two parallel chains, is a local phenomenon, altogether separate from the causes on which the general structure of the country depends. The eastern basin of the Cordillera of Venezuela is not shut up like the basin of Valencia, it is in the knot of the mountains of Las Coquizas and of Higuerota that the Serranía de los Teques and Oripoto, stretching eastward, form two valleys, those of the Rio Guaira and Rio Tui. The former contains the town of Caracas, and both unite below the Caurimare. The Rio Tui runs through the rest of the basin from west to east, as far as its mouth, which is situated on the north of the mountains of Panaquire. Cape Codera seems to terminate on the northern range of the littoral mountains of Venezuela, but this termination is only apparent. The coast forms a vast nook, thirty-five sea leagues in length, at the bottom of which is the mouth of the Rio Unare and the road of Nueva Barcelona. Stretching first from west to east in the parallel of 10 degrees 37 minutes, this coast recedes at the parallel of 10 degrees 6 minutes, and resumes its original direction, 10 degrees 37 minutes to 10 degrees 44 minutes, from the western extremity of the peninsula of Araya to the eastern extremities of Montana de Paria and the island of Trinidad. From this dissection of the coast, it follows that the range of mountains bordering the shore of the provinces of Caracas and Barcelona, between the meridian 66 degrees 32 minutes and 68 degrees 29 minutes, which I saw on the south of the bay of Higuerota, 
and on the north of the llanos of pau and cachipo must be considered as the continuation of the southern chain of venezuela and as being linked on the west with the sierras de panaquire and ucumare it may therefore be said that between cape codera and cariaco the inland chain itself forms the coast this range of very low mountains often interrupted from the mouth of the rio tui to that of the rio neveri rises abruptly on the east of nueva barcelona first in the rocky island of chimanas and then in the cerro del bergantin elevated probably more than eight hundred toises but of which the astronomical position and the precise height are yet alike unknown on the meridian of cumana the northern chain that of cape codera and the silla of caracas again appears the micaceous slate of the peninsula of araya and maniquarez joins by the ridge or knot of mountains of miapire the southern chain that of panaquire the bergantin turimiquire caripe and guacharo this ridge not more than two hundred toises of absolute height has in the ancient revolutions of our planet prevented the eruption of the ocean and the union of the gulfs of paria and cariaco on the west of cape codera the northern chain composed of primitive granitic rocks presents the loftiest summits of the whole cordillera of venezuela but the culminant points east of that cape are composed in the southern chain of secondary calcareous rocks we have seen above that the peak of turimiquiri at the back of cocoyar is one thousand and fifty toises while the bottoms of the high valleys of the convent of caripe and of guardia de saint augustin are four hundred and twelve and five hundred and thirty three toises of absolute height on the east of the ridge of miapire the southern chain sinks abruptly toward the rio arco and the guarapiche but on quitting the main land we see it rising on the southern coast of the island of trinidad which is but a detached portion of the continent and of which the northern side unquestionably presents the vestiges of the northern chain of venezuela that is of the montana de paria the paradise of christopher columbus the peninsula of araya and the silla of caracas the observations of latitude i made at the via de cura ten degrees two minutes forty seven seconds the farm of cocoyar ten degrees nine minutes thirty seven seconds and the convent of caripe ten degrees ten minutes fourteen seconds compared with the more anciently known position of the south coast of trinidad latitude ten degrees six minutes prove that the southern chain south of the basins of valencia and of tui and of the gulfs of cariaco and paria is still more uniform in the direction from west to east than the northern chain from corto cabello to punta galera note the bottom of the first of these four basins bounded by parallel chains is from two hundred and thirty to four hundred and sixty toises above and that of the two latter from thirty to forty toises below the present sea level hot springs gush from the bottom of the gulf of the basin of cariaco as far from the bottom of the base of valencia on the continent End of note. it is highly important to know the southern limit of the littoral cordillera of venezuela because it determines the parallel at which the llanos or the savannas of caracas barcelona and cumana begin on some well-known maps we find erroneously marked between the meridians of caracas and cumana two cordilleras stretching from north to south as far as latitude eight and three-quarter degrees under the names of cerros de alta gracia and del bergantin thus describing as mountainous a territory of twenty-five leagues broad where we should seek in vain a hillock of a few feet in height turning to the island of margarita composed like the peninsula of araya of micaceous slate and anciently linked with that peninsula by the moro de chacopata and the islands of coche and cabagua we seem to recognize in the two mountainous groups of manacao and la vega de san juan traces of a third coast chain of the cordillera of venezuela do these two groups of margarita of which the most westerly is above six hundred toises high belong to a submarine chain stretching by the isle of tortuga toward the sierra de santa lucia del coro on the parallel of eleven degrees must we admit that in latitude eleven and one quarters and twelve and one half degrees a fourth chain the most northerly of all formerly stretched out in the direction of the island of hermanos by blanquilla los roques orchilla aves buen aire curacao and oruba towards cape chichivacoa these important problems can only be solved when the chain of islands parallel with the coast has been properly examined it must not be forgotten that a great eruption of the ocean appears to have taken place between trinidad and granada and that nowhere else in the long series of the lesser antilles are two neighboring islands so far removed from each other Note 
it is affirmed that the island of trinidad is traversed in the northern part by a chain of primitive slate and that granada furnishes basalt it would be important to examine of what rock the island of tobago is composed it appeared to me of dazzling whiteness and on what point in going from trinidad northward the trachytic and trappean system of the lesser antilles begins End of note. we observe the effect of the rotary current in the direction of the coast of trinidad as in the coasts of the provinces of cumana and caracas between cape paria and punta araya and between cape codera and porto cabello if a part of the continent has been overwhelmed by the ocean on the north of the peninsula of araya it is probable that the enormous shoal which surrounds cubagua coche the island of margareta los frailes la sola and the testigos marks the extent and outline of the submerged land this shoal or placer which is of the extent of two hundred square leagues is well known only to the tribe of the guayqueris it is frequented by these indians on account of its abundant fishery in calm weather the grand placer is believed to be separated only by some canals or deep furrows of the bank of granada from the sandbank that extends like a narrow dike from tobago to granada and which is known by the lowering of the temperature of the water and from the sandbanks of los roques and aves the guayquiri indians and generally speaking all the inhabitants of the coast of cumana and barcelona are imbued with an idea that the water of the shoals of margarita and the testigos diminishes from year to year they believe that in the lapse of ages the moro de chacopata on the peninsula of araya will be joined by a neck of land to the islands of lobos and coche the partial retreat of the waters on the coast of cumana is undeniable and the bottom of the sea has been upheaved at various times by earthquakes but these local phenomena which it is too difficult to account for by the action of volcanic force the changes in the direction of currents and the consequent swelling of the waters are very different from the effects manifested at once over the space of several hundred square leagues end of chapter three point thirty two part six chapter three point thirty two part seven of personal narrative of travels to the equinoctial regions of america during the years seventeen ninety nine to eighteen o four volume three by alexander von humboldt translated by thomasina ross this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter three point thirty two part seven four group of the mountains of parima it is essential to mineralogical geography to designate by one name all the mountains that form one system to attain this end a denomination belonging to a partial group only may be extended over the whole chain or a name may be employed which by reason of its novelty is not likely to give rise to homogenic mistakes mountaineers designate every group by a special denomination and a chain is generally considered as forming a whole only when it is seen from afar bounding the horizon of the plains we find the name of snowy mountains himalaya and maus repeated in every zone white alps alb black and blue the greater part of the sierra parima is as it were edged round by the orinoco i have however avoided a denomination having reference to this circumstance because the group of mountains to which i am about to direct attention extends far beyond the banks of the orinoco it stretches southeast towards the banks of the rio negro and the rio branco to the parallel of one and one-half degrees north latitude the geographical name of parima has the advantage of reviving recollections of the fable of el dorado and the lofty mountains which in the sixteenth century were supposed to surround the lake Urupunuini or the laguna de parima the missionaries of the orinoco still give the name of parima to the whole of the vast mountainous country comprehended between the sources of the Erivato, the orinoco the caroni the rio parima a tributary of the rio branco and the rupunuri or rupunuini a tributary of the rio essequibo note the rio parima after receiving the waters of the uraricuera joins the tacutu and forms near the fort of san joaquim the rio branco one of the tributary streams of the rio negro End of note. this country is one of the least known parts of south america and is covered with thick forests and savannas it is inhabited by independent indians and is intersected by rivers of dangerous navigation owing to the frequency of shoals and cataracts the system of the mountains of parima separates the plains of the lower orinoco from those of the rio negro and the amazon 
it occupies a territory of trapezoidal form comprehended between the parallels of three and eight degrees and the meridians of sixty-one and seventy and one-half degrees i here indicate only the elements of the loftiest group for we shall soon see that toward southeast the mountainous country in lowering draws near the equator as well as to french and portuguese guiana the sierra parima extends most in the direction north sixty-five degrees west and the partial chains into which it separates on the westward generally follow the same direction it is less a cordillera or a continuous chain in the sense given to those denominations when applied to the andes and caucasus than an irregular grouping of mountains separated the one from the other by plains and savannas i visited the northern western and southern parts of the sierra parima which is remarkable by its position and its extent of more than twenty five thousand square leagues from the confluence of the apure as far as the delta of the orinoco it is uniformly three or four leagues removed from the right bank of the great river only some rocks of gneiss granite amphibolic slate and greenstone advance as far as the bed of the orinoco and create the rapids of torno and of la boca del infierno Note. to this series of advanced rocks also belong those which pierce the soil between the rio apquire and the rio barima the granitic and amphibolic rocks of the vieja guiana and of the town of angostura the sierra de mono on the south-east of muitaco or real corona the cerro de taramuto near alta gracia etc End of note. i shall name successively from north northeast to south southwest the different chains seen by m bonpland and myself as we approach the equator and the river amazon first the northernmost chain of the whole system of the mountains of parima appeared to us to be that which stretches latitude seven degrees fifty minutes from the rio arui in the meridian of the rapids of camiseta at the back of the town of angostura towards the great cataracts of the rio caroni and the sources of the imitaca in the missions of the catalonian capuchins this chain which is not three hundred toises high separates the tributary streams of the orinoco and those of the rio cuyuni between the town of upata capapui and santa marta westward of the meridian of the rapids of camiseta longitude sixty seven degrees ten minutes the high mountains in the basin of the rio caura only commence at seven degrees twenty minutes of latitude on the south of the mission of san luis guaraguaraico where they occasion the rapids of mura this chain stretches westward by the sources of the rio cuchivero the cerros del mato the serbatana and maniapure as far as tupapano a group of strangely formed granite rocks surrounding the encaramada the culminate points of this chain latitude seven degrees ten minutes to seven degrees twenty eight minutes are according to the information i gathered from the indians situated near the sources of cano de la taturga in the chain of the encaramada there are some traces of gold this chain is also celebrated in the mythology of the tamanacs for the painted rocks it contains are associated with ancient local traditions the orinoco changes its direction at the confluence of the apure breaking a part of the chain of the encaramada the latter mountains and scattered rocks in the plain of capuchino and on the north of cabruta may be considered either as the vestiges of a destroyed spur or on the hypothesis of the igneous origin of granite as partial eruptions and upheavals i shall not here discuss the question whether the most northerly chain that of angostura and of the great fall of caroni be a continuation of the chain of encaramada third in navigating the orinoco from north to south we observe alternately on the east small plains and chains of mountains of which we cannot distinguish the profiles that is the sections perpendicular to their longitudinal axes from the mission of the encaramada to the mouth of the rio cama i counted seven recurrences of this alternation of savannas and high mountains first on the south of the isle cucuruparu rises the chain of chaviripe latitude seven degrees ten minutes it stretches inclining toward the south latitude six degrees twenty minutes to six degrees forty minutes by the cerros de corozal the amoco and the murcielago as far as the Erevato, a tributary of the caura it there forms the rapids of paru and is linked with the summits of matacuna fourth the chain of chavaripe is succeeded by that of the baraguan latitude six degrees fifty minutes to seven degrees five minutes celebrated for the strait of the orinoco to which it gives its name the saraguaca or mountain of uruana 
composed of detached blocks of granites, may be regarded as a northern spur of the chain of the Baraguan, stretching southwest toward Simacu and the mountains, latitude 5 degrees 50 minutes, that separate the sources of the Erevato and the Caura from those of the Ventuari. Fifth, the chain of Carichana and of Paruasi, latitude 6 degrees 25 minutes, wild in aspect, but surrounded by charming meadows. Piles of granites crowned with trees and insulated rocks of prismatic form, the Mogoti of Coquiza, and the Maremaruta or Castillito of the Jesuits, belong to this chain. Sixth, on the western bank of the Orinoco, which is low and flat, the peak of Uniana rises abruptly, more than 3,000 feet. The spurs, latitude 5 degrees 35 minutes to 5 degrees 40 minutes, which this peak sends eastward, are crossed by the Orinoco at the first great cataract, that of Mapura, or the Atures. Further on they unite together, and rising in a chain stretch toward the sources of Cataniapo, the rapids of Ventuari, situated on the north of the confluence of the Assisi, latitude 5 degrees 10 minutes, and the Cerro Cunevo. 7. Five leagues south of the Atures is the chain of Quituna, or of Maypures, latitude 15 degrees 13 minutes, which forms the bar of the second great cataract. None of those lofty mountains are situated on the west of the Orinoco. On the east of that river rises the Cunavami, the truncated peak of Calitamini, and the Huhamari, to which Father Gili attributes an extraordinary height. 8. The last chain of the southwest part of the Sierra Parima is separated by woody plains from the chain of the Maypures. It is the chain of the Cerros de Sipapo, latitude 4 degrees 50 minutes an enormous wall behind which the powerful chief of the Guaypunabi Indians entrenched himself during the expedition of Solano. The chain of Sipapo may be considered as the beginning of the range of the lofty mountains which bound, at the distance of some leagues, the right bank of the Orinoco, where that river runs from southeast to northwest, between the mouth of the Ventuari, the Jao, and the Padamo, latitude 3 degrees 15 minutes. In ascending the Orinoco, above the cataract of Maypures, we find, long before we reach the point where it turns, near San Fernando del Atabapo, the mountains disappearing from the bed of the river, and from the mouth of the Zama there are only insulated rocks in the plains. The chain of Sipapo forms the southwest limit of the system of mountains of Parima, between seventy and one-half and sixty-eight degrees of longitude. Modern geologists have observed that the culminant points of a group are less frequently found at its centre than toward one of its extremities preceding and announcing in some sort a great depression of the chain note as seen in mont blanc and chimborazo end of note this phenomenon is again observed in the group of the parima the loftiest summits of which the duida and the maraguaca are in the most southerly range of mountains where the plains of the casiquiari and the rio negro begin these plains or savannas which are covered with forests only in the vicinity of the rivers do not however exhibit the same uniform continuity as the llanos of the lower Orinoco, of the Meta, and of Buenos Aires. They are interrupted by groups of hills, Cerros de Daribapa, and by insulated rocks of grotesque form, which pierce the soil and from a distance fix the attention of the traveller. These granitic and often stratified masses resemble the ruins of pillars or edifices. The same force which upheaved the whole group of the Sierra Parima has acted here and there, in the plains, as far as beyond the equator. The existence of these steeps and sporadic hills renders it difficult to determine the precise limits of a system in which the mountains are not longitudinally arranged, as in a vein. As we advance toward the frontier of the Portuguese province of the Rio Negro, the high rocks become more rare, and we no longer find the shelves or dikes of gneiss granite, which cause rapids and cataracts in the rivers. Such is the surface of the soil, between sixty-eight and one-half, and seventy and one-half degrees of longitude between the meridian of the bifurcation of the Orinoco and that of San Fernando de Atabapo. Further on, westward of the upper Rio Negro, toward the source of that river and its tributary streams, the Xi and the Uaupes, latitude 1 to 2 and a quarter degrees, longitude 72 to 74 degrees, lies a small mountainous tableland in which Indian traditions place a Laguna de Oro, that is, a lake surrounded with beds of auriferous earth. Note. According to the journals of Acunha and Fritz, the Manao Indians, Manoas, obtained from the banks of the Iquiari, Iguiari or Iguare, gold of which they made thin plates. 
The manuscript notes of Don Apollinaro also mention the gold of the Rio Uaupes, La Condamine Voyage a l'Amazon. We must not confound the Laguna de Oro, which is said to be found in going the up the Uaupes, north latitude zero degrees, forty minutes, with another gold lake, south latitude one degree ten minutes, which La Condamine calls Marahi, or Morachi, water, and which is merely a tract often inundated between the sources of the Hurubesh, Urubahi, and the Rio Marahi, a tributary stream of the Caqueta. End of note. At Maroa, the most westerly mission of the Rio Negro, the Indians assured me that that river, as well as the Inerida, a tributary of the Guavari, rises at the distance of five days' march in a country bristled with rocks and hills. The natives of San Marcelino speak of a Sierra Tuhuni, nearly thirty leagues west of their village, between the He and the Icana. La Condamine learned also from the Indians of the Amazon that the Quiquiari comes from a country of mountains and mines. Now, the Iquiari is placed by the French astronomer between the equator and the mouth of the He, he, he which identifies it with the Iguiari that falls into the Icana. We cannot advance in the geological knowledge of America without having continually recourse to the researches of comparative geography. The small system of mountains, which we may provisionally call that of the sources of the Rio Negra and the Uaupes, and the culminant points of which are not probably more than 100 or 120 toises high, appears to extend southward to the basin of Rio Yupuru, where rocky ridges form the cataracts of the Rio de los Iganos and the Salto Grande de Upura, south latitude 0 degrees 40 minutes to north latitude 0 degrees 28 minutes, and the basin of the upper Guaviare towards the west. We find in the course of this river, from 60 to 70 leagues west of San Fernando del Atabapo, two walls of rocks bounding the strait, nearly 3 degrees 10 minutes north latitude and 73 and 3 quarters degrees longitude where Father Maella terminated his excursion. That missionary told me that, in going up the Guaviare, he perceived near the strait, Angostura, a chain of mountains bounding the horizon on the south. It is not known whether those mountains traverse the Guaviare more to the west, and join the spurs which advance from the eastern cordillera of New Granada, between the Rio Umadilla and the Rio Ariari, in the direction of the savannas of San Juan de los Llanos. I doubt the existence of this junction. If it really existed, the plains of the lower Orinoco would communicate with those of the Amazon only by a very narrow land strait on the east of the mountainous country which surrounds the source of the Rio Negro. But it is more probable that this mountainous country, a small system of mountains geognostically dependent on the Sierra Parima, forms as it were an island in the Llanos of Guaviare and Upura. Father Punier, principal of the Franciscan convent at Popayan, assured me that when he went from the missions settled on the rio caguan to aramo a village situated on the rio guayavero he found only treeless savannas extending as far as the eye could reach the chain of mountains placed by several modern geographers between the meta and the vichada and which appears to link the andes of new granada with the sierra prima is altogether imaginary we have now examined the prolongation of the sierra parima on the west toward the source of the rio negro it remains for us to follow the same group in its eastern direction the mountains of the upper orinoco eastward of the raudal of the guajaribos north latitude one degree fifteen minutes longitude sixty seven degrees thirty eight minutes join the chain of pacaraina which divides the waters of the caroni and the rio branco and of which the micaceous schist resplendent with silvery lustre figures so conspicuously in raleigh's el dorado the part of that chain containing the sources of the Orinoco has not yet been explored, but its prolongation more to the east, between the meridian of the military post of Guirior and the Rupunuri, a tributary of the Essequibo, is known to me through the travels of the Spaniards Antonio Santos and Nicolas Rodriguez, and also by the geodesic labors of two Portuguese, Pontes and Almeida. Two portages but little frequented are situated between the Rio Branco and the Rio Essequibo south of the chain of Pacaraina. They shorten the land road leading from the Via del Rio Negro to Dutch Guyana. Note, the portages of Sarauru and the Lake Amuku. End of note. On the contrary, the portage between the basin of the Rio Branco and that of the Caroni crosses the summit of the chain of Pacaraina. On the northern slope of this chain rises the Anocapra, a tributary of the Paraguamusi or Paravamusi, 
and on the southern slope the Araikukwe, which, with the Urari Capara, forms the famous valley of inundations, above the destroyed mission of Santa Rosa, latitude 3 degrees 46 minutes, longitude 65 degrees 10 minutes. The principal cordillera, which appears of little breadth, stretches on a length of 80 leagues, from the portage of Anocapra, longitude 65 degrees 35 minutes, to the left bank of the Rupunuri, longitude 61 degrees 50 minutes, following the parallels of 4 degrees 4 minutes, and 4 degrees 12 minutes. We there distinguish from west to east the mountains of Pacaraina, Tipique, Tauyana, among which rises the Rio Parima, a tributary of the Uruariquera, Tubachi, Cristo, latitude 3 degrees 56 minutes, longitude 62 degrees 52 minutes, and Canopiri. The Spanish traveller Rodriguez marks the eastern part of the chain by the name of Quimiropaca, but preferring to adopt general names, I continue to give the name of Pacaraina to the whole of this cordillera which links the mountains of the Orinoco to the interior of Dutch and French Guiana, and which Raleigh and Chemus made known in Europe at the end of the sixteenth century. This chain is broken by the Rupunuri and the Essequibo, so that one of their tributary streams, the Tavarecuru, takes its rise on the southern declivity, and the other, the Sibarona, on the northern. On approaching the Essequibo, the mountains are more developed toward the southeast, and extend beyond two and a half degrees north latitude. From this eastern branch of the chain of Pacaraina, the Rio Rupunuri rises near the Cerro Uasari. On the right bank of the Rio Branco, in a still more southern latitude, between one and two degrees north, is a mountainous territory in which the Caritamini, the Padaviri, the Cababuri, Cavaburis, and the Pacamoni take their source from east to west. This western branch of the mountains of Pacaraina separates the basin of Rio Branco from that of the upper Orinoco, the sources of which are probably not found east of the meridian of 66 degrees 15 minutes. It is linked with the mountains of Unturan and Umariquin, situated southeast of the mission of Esmeralda. Thence it results that while on the west of the Casiquiari, between that river, the Atabapo and the Rio Negro, we find only vast plains, in which rise some little hills and insulated rocks, real spurs stretched eastward of the Casiquiari, from northwest to southeast, and form a continued mountainous territory as far as two degrees north latitude. The basin only, or rather, the transversal valley of the Rio Branco, forms a kind of gulf, a succession of plains and savannas, campos, several of which penetrate from south to north, into the mountainous land between the eastern and western branches of the chain of Pacaraina, to the distance of eight leagues north of the parallel of San Joaquin. End of chapter 3.32, part 7. Chapter 3.32, Part 8 of Personal Narrative of Travels to the Equinoctial Regions of America during the years 1799 to 1804, Volume 3, by Alexander von Humboldt, translated by Thomasina Ross. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 3.32, Part 8 We have just examined the southern part of the vast system of the mountains of Parima, between two and four degrees of latitude, and between the meridians of the sources of the Orinoco and the Essequibo. The development of this system of mountains northward, between the chain of Pacaraina and the Rio Cuyuni, and between the meridians 66 and 61 and three quarters degrees, is still less known. The only road frequented by white men is that of the river Paragua, which receives the Paraguamusi near the Quirior, we find indeed in the journal of Nicolas Rodriguez that he was constantly obliged to have his canoe carried by men, arrastrando, past the cataracts which intercept the navigation. But we must not forget a circumstance of which my own experience furnished me with frequent proofs, that the cataracts in this part of South America are often caused only by ridges of rocks which do not form mountains. Rodriguez names but two between Barceloneta and the mission of San Jose while the missionaries place more to the east, in six degrees latitude, between the Rio Caroni and the Cuyuni, the Saranias of Usupama and Rinocote. The latter crosses the Mazaruni and forms thirty-nine cataracts in the Essequibo, from the military post of Arenda, latitude five degrees thirty minutes, to the mouth of Rupunuri. With respect to the continuation of the system of the mountains of Parima, 
southeast of the meridian of the Essequibo, the materials are entirely wanting for tracing it with precision. The whole interior of Dutch, French, and Portuguese Guiana is a terra incognita, and the astronomical geography of those countries has scarcely made any progress during the space of thirty years. If the American limits recently fixed between France and Portugal should one day cease to be mere diplomatic illusions and acquire reality in being traced on the territory by means of astronomical observations, as was projected in 1817, this undertaking would lead geographical engineers to that unknown region which, at three and a half degrees west of Cayenne, divides the waters between the coast of Guyana and the Amazon. Till that period, which the political state of Brazil seems to retard, the geognostic table of the group of Parima can only be completed by scattered notions collected in the Portuguese and Dutch colonies. In going from the Uasari Mountains, latitude 2 degrees 25 minutes, longitude 61 degrees 50 minutes, which form a part of the eastern branch of the Cordillera of Pacaraina, we find towards the east a chain of mountains called by the missionaries Acare and Tumucuraque. Those two names are found on our maps between one-half and three degrees north latitude. Raleigh first made known, in 1596, the system of the mountains of Parima, between the sources of the Rio Caroni and the Essequibo, by the name of Guacarima, Pacarima, and the Jesuits Acunha and Artadilla furnished, in 1639, the first precise notions of that part of this system which extends from the meridian of Essequibo to that of Oyapoc. There they place the mountains of Iguaracura and Paraguajo, the former of which gives birth to a gold river, Rio de Oro, a tributary of the Curupatuba. Note. When we know that in Tamanac gold is called Caricuri, in Carib, Caricura, in Peruvian, Cori, Curi, we easily recognize in the names of the mountains and rivers Iguacuri, Curupatuba, which we have just marked the indication of auriferous soil such as the analogy of the imported roots in the American tongues, which otherwise differ altogether from each other, that three hundred leagues west of the mountain Igaracuru, on the banks of the Caqueta, Pedro de Usura heard of the province of Caricuri, rich in gold washings. The Curupatuba falls into the Amazon, near the Via of Monte Alegre, northeast of the mouth of the Rio Tapoyos. End of note and according to the assertion of the natives, subterraneous noises are sometimes heard from the latter. The ridge of this chain of mountains, which runs in a direction south, 85 degrees east, from the peak of Duida near the Esmeralda, latitude 3 degrees 19 minutes, to the rapids of the Rio Manaya near Cape Nord, latitude 1 degree 50 minutes, divides in the parallel of 2 degrees the northern sources of the Essequibo, the Moroni, and the Oyapoc, from the southern sources of the Rio Trombetas, Curupatuba, and Paru. The most southern spurs of this chain approach nearer to the Amazon, at the distance of fifteen leagues. These are the first heights which we perceive after having left Heberos and the mouth of the Huayaga. They are constantly seen in navigating from the mouth of the Rio Topayo towards that of Paru, from the town of Santarem to Almerim. The peak Tripopo is nearly in the meridian of the former of those towns and is celebrated among the Indians of the Upper Maroni. It is said that farther eastward, at Melgaco, the Sierras do Veljo and do Paru are still distinguished in the horizon. The real boundaries of this series of sources of the Rio Trombetas are better known southward than northward, where a mountainous country appears to advance in Dutch and French Guiana, as far as within twenty to twenty-five leagues of the coast. The numerous cataracts of the rivers of Suriname, Maroni, and Oyapoc prove the extent and the prolongation of rocky ridges, but in those regions nothing indicates the existence of continued plains or tablelands some hundred toises high, fitted for the cultivation of the plants of the temperate zone. The system of the mountains of Parima surpasses in extent nineteen times that of the whole of Switzerland. Even considering the mountainous group of the sources of the Rio Negro and the He as independent or insulated amid the plains, we still find the Sierra Parima, between Maypures and the sources of the Oyapoc, to be 340 leagues in length. Its greatest breadth, the rocks of Imataca, near the delta of the Orinoco, at the sources of the Rio Paru, is 140 leagues. In the group of the Parima, as well as in the group of the mountains of Central Asia, between the Himalaya and the Altai, 
the partial chains are often interrupted and have no uniform parallelism towards the southwest however between the strait of baraguan the mouth of the rio zama and the esmeralda the line of the mountains is generally in the direction of north seventy degrees west such is also the position of a distant coast that of portuguese french dutch and english guiana from cape north to the mouth of the orinoco such is the mean direction of the course of the rio negro and upura it is desirable to fix our attention on the angles formed by the partial chains in different regions of america with the meridians because on less extended surfaces for instance in germany we find also this singular coexistence of groups of neighboring mountains following laws of direction altogether different though every separate group exhibits the greatest uniformity in the line of chains the soil on which the mountains of parima rise is slightly convex by barometric measures i found that between three and four degrees north latitude the plains are elevated from one hundred and sixty to one hundred and eighty toises above sea level this height will appear considerable if we reflect that at the foot of the andes of peru at tomependa nine hundred leagues from the coast of the atlantic ocean the llanos or plains of the amazon rise only to the height of one hundred and ninety four toises the distinctive characteristics of the group of the mountains of parima are the rocks of granite and granite gneiss the total absence of calcareous secondary formations and the shelves of bare rock the tsi of the chinese deserts which occupy immense spaces in the savannas five group of the brazil mountains this group has hitherto been marked on the maps in a very erroneous way the temperate tablelands and real chains of three hundred to five hundred toises high have been confounded with countries of exceedingly hot temperature and of which the undulating surface presents only ranges of hills variously grouped but the observations of scientific travellers have recently thrown great light on the orography of portuguese america the mountainous region of brazil of which the mean height rises at least to four hundred toises is comprehended within very narrow limits nearly between eighteen and twenty eight degrees south latitude it does not appear to extend between the provinces of goyaz and mato grosso between longitude fifty three degrees west of the meridian of paris when we regard in one view the eastern configuration of north and south america we perceive that the coast of brazil and guiana from cape saint roch to the mouth of the orinoco stretching from south-east to north-west corresponds with that of labrador as the coast from cape saint roch to the rio de la plata corresponds with that of the united states stretching from south-west to north-east the chain of the alleghanies is opposite to the latter coast as the principal cordilleras of brazil are nearly parallel to the shore of the provinces of porto seguro rio janeiro and rio grande the alleghanies generally composed of gravaca and transition rocks are somewhat loftier than the almost primitive mountains of granite gneiss and mica slate of the brazilian group they are also of a far more simple structure their chains lying nearer to each other and preserving as in the jura a more uniform parallelism if instead of comparing those parts of the new continent situated north and south of the equator we confine ourselves to south america we find on the western and northern coasts in their whole length a continued chain near the shore the andes and the cordillera of venezuela while the eastern coast presents masses of more or less lofty mountains only between twelve and thirty degrees south latitude in this space three hundred and sixty leagues in length the system of the brazil mountains corresponds geologically in form and position with the andes of chile and peru its most considerable portion lies between the parallels fifteen and twenty two degrees opposite the andes of potosi and la paz but its mean height is five toises less and cannot even be compared with that of the mountains of parima jura and auvergne the principal direction of the brazilian chains where they attain the height of from four to five hundred toises is from south to north and from south southwest to north northeast but between thirteen and nineteen degrees the chains are considerably enlarged and at the same time lowered toward the west ridges and ranges of hills seem to advance beyond the land straits which separate the sources of the rio araguay parana topayos paraguay guapore and aguapehi in sixty three degrees longitude as the western widening of the brazilian group or rather the undulations of the soil and the campos paracis correspond with the spurs of santa cruz de la sierra and beni which the andes send out eastward 
it was formally concluded that the system of the mountains of brazil was linked with that of the andes of upper peru i myself laboured under this error in my first geological studies a coast chain cerro de mar runs nearly parallel with the coast northeast of rio janeiro lowering considerably towards rio doce and losing itself almost entirely near bahia latitude twelve degrees fifty eight minutes according to m eschwege some small ridges near cape st roch latitude five degrees twelve minutes note geognostica gemuda von brasilien eighteen twenty two the limestone of bahia abounds in fossil wood end of note southeast of rio de janeiro and the Sierra maro follows the coast behind the island of st catherine as far as torres latitude twenty nine degrees twenty minutes it there turns westward and forms an elbow stretching by the campos de vacaria towards the banks of the jacui another chain is situated westward of the shore chain of brazil this is the most lofty and considerable of all and is called the chain of Yarica. m eschwege distinguishes it by the name of cerro do espinhaco and considers it as the principal part of the whole structure of the mountains of brazil this cordillera loses itself northward between minas novas and the southern extremity of the capitania of bahia in sixteen degrees latitude Note. the rocky ridges that form the cataract of paulo afonso in the rio san francisco are supposed to belong to the northern prolongation of the cerro de espinaco as a series of heights in the province of Ceara, fetid calcareous rocks containing a quantity of petrified fish belong to the cerros dos vertentes end of note it is there more than sixty leagues removed from the coast of porto seguro but southward between the parallels of rio janeiro and st paul latitude twenty two to twenty three degrees in the knot of the mountains of cerro de Montiquieri, it draws so near to the cordillera of the shore cerro do mar that they are almost confounded together in the same manner the cerro do espinhaco follows constantly the direction of a meridian towards the north while towards the south it runs southeast and terminates about twenty five degrees latitude the chain reaches its highest elevation between eighteen and twenty one degrees and there the spurs and table-lands at its back are of sufficient extent to furnish lands for cultivation where at successive heights there are temperate climates comparable to the delicious climates of jalapa guaduas caracas and caripe this advantage which depends at once on the widening of the mass of the chain and of its spurs is nowhere found in the same degree east of the andes not even in chains of more considerable absolute height as those of venezuela and the orinoco the culminant points of the Serra do espinoco in the capitania of minas Gerais are the itambe nine hundred and thirty two toises the cerro de piedad near sabara nine hundred and ten toises the itacalumi properly itacunumi nine hundred toises the pico of itibiri eight hundred and sixteen toises the serres of caraca ibitipoca and papagayo st hilaire felt piercing cold in the month of november therefore in summer in the whole cordillera of lapa from the via do principe to the moro of caspar suarez we have just noticed two chains of mountains nearly parallel but of which the most extensive the littoral chain is the least lofty the capital of brazil is situated at the point where the two chains draw nearest together and are linked together on the east of the serra de Montiquieri, if not by a transversal ridge at least by a mountainous territory old systematic ideas respecting the rising of mountains in proportion as we advance into a country would have warranted the belief that there existed in the capitanio of mato grosso a central cordillera much loftier than that of Villarica or do espinhaco but we now know and this is confirmed by climateric circumstances that there exists no continued chain properly speaking westward of rio san francisco on the frontiers of minas Gerais and goyas we find only a group of mountains of which the culminant points are the serras de canastra southwest of paracatu and the de marseilla latitude eight and one half and nine point ten degrees and further north the pyrenees stretching from east to west latitude sixteen degrees ten minutes between Villaboa and meja ponte m eschwege has named the group of mountains of goyaz the cerro dos vertentes because it divides the waters between the southern tributary streams of the rio grande or parana and the northern tributary streams of rio tucantines it runs southward beyond the rio grande parana 
and approaches the chain of Espinpapo in twenty three degrees latitude by the Sierra do Franca. It attains only the height of three hundred or four hundred toises, with the exception of some summits northwest of Paracatu, and is consequently much lower than the chain of Villarica. Further on, west of the meridian of Villaboa, there are only ridges and a series of low hills which, on a length of twelve degrees, form the division of water, latitude thirteen to seventeen degrees, between the Araguay and the Paranaiba, a tributary of the Parana, between the Rio Tapoyos and the Paraguay, between Guapure and the Aguapehi. The Serra of San Marta, longitude fifteen and one half degrees, is somewhat lofty, but maps have vastly exaggerated the height of the Cerros or Campos Parasis, north of the towns of Quibaya and Villabella, latitude thirteen to fourteen degrees, and longitude fifty-eight to sixty-two degrees. These campos, which take their name from that of a tribe of wild Indians, are vast, barren tablelands, entirely destitute of vegetation, and in them the sources of the tributary streams of three great rivers, the Topayos, the Madeira, and the Paraguay, take their rise. According to the measures and geologic observations of M. Eschvega, the high summits of the Cerro do Mar, the coast chain, scarcely attain six hundred and sixty toises. Those of the Cerro do Espinhaco, chain of Villarica, nine hundred and fifty toises. Those of Cerro de los Vertentes, group of Canastra and the Brazilian Pyrenees, four hundred and fifty toises. Further west, the surface of the soil seems to present but slight undulations, but no measure of height has been made beyond the meridian of Villaboa. Considering the system of the mountains of Brazil in their real limits, we find, except some conglomerates, the same absence of secondary formations as in the system of the mountains of the Orinoco, group of Parima. These secondary formations, which rise to considerable heights in the cordillera of Venezuela and Cumaná, belong only to the low regions of Brazil. End of chapter 3.32 Part 8「three point thirty two part nine of personal narrative of travels to the equinoctial regions of America during the years seventeen ninety nine to eighteen o four volume three by Alexander von Humboldt translated by Thomasina Ross this LibriVox recording is in the public domain chapter three point thirty two part nine b plains llanos or basins in that part of South America situated on the east of the Andes, we have successively examined three systems of mountains, those of the shore of Venezuela, of the Parima, and Brazil. We have seen that this mountainous region, which equals the Cordillera of the Andes, not in mass, but in area and horizontal section of the surface, is three times less elevated, much less rich in precious metals adhering to the rock, destitute of recent traces of volcanic fire, and, with the exception of the coast of Venezuela, little exposed to the violence of earthquakes the average height of the three systems diminishes from north to south from seven hundred and fifty to four hundred toises those of the culminant points maxima of the height of each group from thirteen fifty to one thousand or nine hundred toises hence it results that the loftiest chain with the exception of the small insulated system of the sierra nevada of santa marta is the cordillera of the shore of venezuela which is itself but a continuation of the andes directing our attention northward we find in central america latitude twelve to thirty degrees and north america latitude thirty to seventy degrees on the east of the andes of guatemala mexico and upper louisiana the same regular lowering which struck us towards the south in this vast extent of land from the cordillera of venezuela to the polar circle eastern america presents two distinct systems the group of the mountains of the west indies which in its eastern part is volcanic in the chain of the Alleghenies. The former of these systems, partly covered by the ocean, may be compared, with respect to its relative position and form, to the Sierra Parima, the latter to the Brazil chains, running also from southwest to northeast. The culminant points of those two systems rise to 1,138 and 1,040 toises. Such are the elements of this curve, of which the convex summit is in the littoral chain of Venezuela. America east of the Andes, column 1, systems of mountains, column 2, maxima of heights in Toise, Brazil group, Iticolumi, 900, south latitude, 20 and one half degrees, Parima group, Duida, 1300, 
north latitude three and one quarter degrees littoral chain of venezuela sea of caracas one thousand three hundred and fifty north latitude ten and one half degrees group of the west indies blue mountains one thousand one hundred and thirty eight north latitude eighteen and one fifth degrees chain of the alleghanies mount washington one thousand forty north latitude forty four and one quarter degrees i have preferred indicating in this table the culminant points of each system to the mean height of the line of elevation the culminant points are the result of direct measures while the mean height is an abstract idea somewhat vague particularly when there is only one group of mountains as in brazil parima and the west indies and not a continued chain although it cannot be doubted that among the five systems of mountains on the east of the andes of which only one belongs to the southern hemisphere the littoral chain of venezuela is the most elevated having a culminant point of one thousand three hundred and fifty toises and a mean height from the line of elevation of seven hundred and fifty we yet recognize with surprise that the mountains of eastern america whether continental or insular differ very considerably in their height above the level of the sea the five groups are all nearly of an average height of from five hundred to seven hundred toises and the culminant points maxima of the lines of elevation from one thousand to thirteen hundred toises that uniformity of structure in an extent twice as great as europe appears to me a very remarkable phenomenon no summit east of the andes of peru mexico and upper louisiana rises beyond the limit of perpetual snow note not even the white mountains of the state of new hampshire to which mount washington belongs long before the accurate measurement of captain partridge i had proved in eighteen o four by the laws of decrement of heat that no summit of the white mountains could attain the height assigned to them by mr cutler of sixteen hundred toises end of note it may be added that with the exception of the alleghanies no snow falls sporadically in any of the eastern systems which we have just examined from these considerations it results and above all from the comparison of the new continent with those parts of the old world which we know best with europe and asia that america thrown into the aquatic hemisphere of our planet is still more remarkable for the continuity and extent of the depression of its surface than for the height and continuity of its longitudinal ridge beyond and within the isthmus of panama but eastward of the cordillera of the andes the mountains scarcely attain over an extent of six hundred thousand square leagues the height of the scandinavian alps the carpathians the mont d'or in auvergne and the jura Note. the southern hemisphere owing to the unequal distribution of seas and continents has long been marked as eminently aquatic but the same inequality is found when we consider the globe as divided not according to the equator but by meridians the great masses of land are stinted between the meridian of ten degrees west and one hundred and fifty degrees east of paris while the hemisphere eminently aquatic begins westward of the meridian of the coast of greenland and ends on the east of the meridian of the eastern coast of new holland and the curly isles this unequal distribution of land and water has the greatest influence on the distribution of heat over the surface of the globe on the inflections of the isothermal lines and the climateric phenomena in general for the inhabitants of the central parts of europe the aquatic hemisphere may be called western and the land hemisphere eastern because in going to the west we reach the former sooner than the latter it is the division according to the meridians which is intended in the text till at the end of the fifteenth century the western hemisphere was as much unknown to the nations of the eastern hemisphere as the one half of the lunar globe is to us at present and will probably always remain End of note. one system only that of the andes comprises in america over a long and narrow zone of three thousand leagues all the summits exceeding fourteen hundred toises high in europe on the contrary even considering the alps and the pyrenees as one sole line of elevation we still find summits far from this line or principal ridge in the sierra nevada of granada sicily greece the apennines perhaps also in portugal from fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred toises high note culminant points malhasen of granada one thousand eight hundred and twenty six toises etna according to captain william henry smith one thousand seven hundred toises monte corno of the apennines one thousand four hundred and eighty nine toises if mount tomoros in greece and the serra gaviera of portugal enter 
as is alleged into the limit of perpetual snow those summits according to their position and latitude should attain from fourteen hundred to sixteen hundred toises yet on the loftiest mountains of greece tomoros olympus and thessaly polyanos and Delope, and mount parnassus m polcavilla saw in the month of august snow lying only in patches and in cavities sheltered from the rays of the sun End of note. the contrast between america and europe with respect to distribution of the culminant points which attain from thirteen hundred to fifteen hundred toises is the more striking as the low eastern mountains of south america of which the maximum of elevation is only from thirteen hundred to fourteen hundred toises are situated beside a cordillera of which the mean height exceeds eighteen hundred toises while the secondary system of the mountains of europe rises to a maxima of elevation of fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred toises near a principal chain of at least twelve hundred toises of average height maxima of the line of elevation in the same parallels andes of chile upper peru knots of the mountains of porco and cusco two thousand five hundred toises group of the brazil mountains a little lower than the Cevennes, nine hundred to one thousand toises andes of popayan and cundinamarca chain of guacas quindiu and antioquia more than two thousand eight hundred toises group of parima mountains little lower than the carpathians one thousand three hundred toises insulated group of the snowy mountains of santa marta it is believed to be three thousand toises high littoral chain of venezuela eighty toises lower than the scandinavian alps one thousand three hundred and fifty toises volcanic andes of guatemala and primitive andes of oaxaca from one thousand seven hundred to one thousand eight hundred toises group of the west indies one hundred and seventy toises higher than the mountains of auvergne one thousand one hundred and forty toises andes of new mexico and upper louisiana rocky mountains and further west the maritime alps of new albion one thousand six hundred to one thousand nine hundred toises chain of the alleghanies one hundred and sixty toises higher than the chains of jura and the gates of malabar one thousand and forty toises this table contains the whole system of mountains of the new continent namely the andes the maritime alps of california or new albion and the five groups of the east i may subjoin to the facts i have just stated an observation equally striking in europe the maxima of secondary systems which exceed fifteen hundred toises are found solely on the south of the alps and pyrenees that is on the south of the principal continental ridge they are situated on the side where that ridge approaches nearest the shore and where the mediterranean has not overwhelmed the land on the north of the alps and pyrenees on the contrary the most elevated secondary systems the carpathian and the scandinavian mountains do not attain the height of thirteen hundred toises Note, the lomnitzer spitz of the carpathian is according to m wallenberg one thousand two hundred forty five toises Snee Hatton, in the chain of Doverfeld in Norway, the highest summit of the old continent north of the parallel of fifty five degrees, is one thousand two hundred and seventy. End of note. The depression of the line of elevation of the second order is consequently found in Europe, as well as in America, where the principal ridge is farthest removed from the shore. If we did not fear to subject great phenomena to too small a scale, we might compare the difference of the height of the alps and the mountains of eastern america with a difference of height observable between the alps or the pyrenees and the mont d'or the jura the vosges or the black forest we have just seen that the causes which upheaved the oxidated crust of the globe in ridges or in groups of mountains have not acted very powerfully in the vast extent of country stretching from the eastern part of the andes towards the old world that depression and that continuity of plains are geological facts the more remarkable as they extend nowhere else in other latitudes the five mountain systems of eastern america of which we have stated the limits divide that part of the continent into an equal number of basins of which only that of the caribbean sea remains submerged from north to south from the polar circle to the straits of magellan we see in succession one the basin of the mississippi and of canada an able geologist mr edwin james has recently shown that this basin is comprehended between the andes of new mexico or upper louisiana and the chains of the alleghanies which stretch northward in crossing the rapids of quebec 
it being quite as open northward as southward it may be designated by the collective name of the basin of the mississippi the missouri the river st lawrence the great lakes of canada the mackenzie river the saskatchewan and the coast of hudson's bay the tributary streams of the lakes and those of the mississippi are not separated by a chain of mountains running from east to west as traced on several maps the line of partition of the waters is marked by a slight ridge a rising of two counter slopes in the plain there is no chain between the sources of the missouri and the assiniboine which is a branch of the red river and of hudson's bay the surface of these plains almost all savannah between the polar sea and the gulf of mexico is more than two hundred and seventy thousand square sea leagues nearly equal to the area of the whole of europe on the north of the parallel of forty two degrees the general slope of the land runs eastward on the south of that parallel it inclines southward to form a precise idea how little abrupt are these slopes we must recollect that the land of lake superior is one hundred toises that of lake erie eighty eight toises and that of lake ontario thirty six toises above the level of the sea the plains around cincinnati latitude thirty nine degrees six minutes are scarcely according to mr drake eighty toises of absolute height towards the west between the ozark mountains and the foot of the andes of upper louisiana rocky mountains latitude thirty five to thirty eight degrees the basin of the mississippi is considerably elevated in the vast desert described by mr nuttall it presents a series of small tablelands gradually rising one above another and of which the most westerly that nearest the rocky mountains between the arkansas and the paducah is more than four hundred and fifty toises high major long measured a base to determine the position and height of james peak in the great basin of the mississippi the line that separates the forests and the savannas runs not as may be supposed in the manner of a parallel but like the atlantic coast and the allegheny mountains themselves from northeast to southwest from pittsburgh toward st louis and the red river of natchitoches so that the northern part only of the state of illinois is covered with gramina this line of demarcation is not only interesting for the geography of plants but exerts as we have said above great influence in retarding culture and population northwest of the lower mississippi in the united states the prairie countries are more slowly colonized and even the tribes of independent indians are forced by the rigor of the climate to pass the winter on the banks of rivers where poplars and willows are found the basins of the mississippi of the lakes of canada and the st lawrence are the largest in america and though the total population does not rise at present beyond three millions it may be considered as that in which between latitude twenty nine and forty five degrees longitude seventy four to ninety four degrees civilization has made the greatest progress it may even be said that in the other basins of the orinoco the amazon and buenos aires agricultural life scarcely exists it begins on a small number of points only to supersede pastoral life and that of fishing and hunting nations the plains between the alleghanies and the andes of upper louisiana are of such vast extent that like the pampas of chocos and buenos aires bamboos ludofia miega and palm trees grow at one extremity while the other during a great part of the year is covered with ice and snow this is a continuation of the basin of the mississippi louisiana and hudson's bay it may be said that all the lowlands on the coast of venezuela situated north of the littoral chain and of the sierra nevada de merida belong to the submerged part of this basin if i treat here separately of the basin of the caribbean sea it is to avoid confounding what in the present state of the globe is partly above and partly below the ocean the recent coincidence of the periods of earthquakes observed at caracas and on the banks of the mississippi the arkansas and the ohio justifies the geologic theories which regard as one basin the plains bounded on the south by the littoral cordillera of venezuela on the east by the alleghanies and the series of the volcanoes of the west indies and on the west by the rocky mountains mexican andes and by the series of the volcanoes of guatemala the basin of the west indies forms as we have already observed a mediterranean with several issues the influence of which on the political destinies of the new continent depends at once on its central position and the great fertility of its islands the outlets of the basin of which the four largest are seventy miles broad are all on the eastern side 
open towards Europe, and agitated by the currents of the tropics. Note. Between Tobago and Granada, St. Martin and the Virgin Isles, Puerto Rico and St. Domingo, and between the Little Bank of Bahama and Cape Canaveral of Florida, end of note. In the same manner as we recognize in our Mediterranean the vestiges of three ancient basins by the proximity of Rhodes, Scarpanto, Candia, and Cerigo, as well as by that of Cape Solero of Sicily, the island of Pantelleria, and Cape Bon in Africa, so the basin of the West India Islands, which exceeds the Mediterranean in extent, seems to present the remains of ancient dikes which join Cape Cotoche of Yucatan to Cape San Antonio of the island of Cuba. No. I do not pretend that this hypothesis of the rupture and the ancient continuity of lands can be extended to the eastern foot of the basin of the West Indies, that is, to the series of the volcanic islands in a line from Trinidad to Puerto Rico, end of note, and that island to Cape Tiburon of St. Domingo, Jamaica, the bank of La Vibora and the rock of Serrania, to Cape Gracias a Dios on the Mosquito Shore. From the situation of the most prominent islands and capes of the continent, there results a division into three partial basins. The most northerly has long been distinguished by a particular denomination, that of the Gulf of Mexico. The intermediary or central basin may be called the Sea of Honduras, on account of the gulf of that name which makes a part of it, and the southern basin, comprehended between the Caribbean islands and the coast of Venezuela, the Isthmus of Panama, and the country of the Mosquito Indians, would form the Caribbean Sea. The modern volcanic rocks, distributed on the two opposite banks of the basin of the West Indies, on the east and west, but not on the north and south, is also a phenomenon worthy of attention. In the Caribbean islands, a group of volcanoes, partly extinct and partly burning, stretches from 12 to 18 degrees, and in the cordilleras of Guatemala and Mexico, from a latitude 9 to 19 and a half degrees. I noticed on the northwest extremity of the basin of the West Indies that the secondary formations dip towards southeast. Along the coast of Venezuela, rocks of gneiss and primitive mica slate dip to northwest. The basalts, amygdaloids, and trachytes, which are often surmounted by tertiary limestones, appear only towards the eastern and western banks. End of chapter 3.32, part 9.